Imagine waking up tomorrow to find out you had long-lost cousins, ones who could breathe thin mountain air better than Olympic athletes, survive Ice Age winters without central heating, and fight off predators the size of cars using stone tools. Sounds like a fantasy novel, right? But just 50,000 years ago, Earth wasn't home to just us, Homo sapiens. It was bustling with diversity, Neanderthals in Europe, Denisovans in Asia, the mysterious hobbits of Indonesia, and more. Picture a single valley in Central Asia where four types of humans might have brushed shoulders while hunting mammoths or making fire. It's wild to think that this isn't a movie pitch. It's our real history. For most of human existence, we weren't the only ones here. But today, when we look around, there's just us. So, what happened? We've all heard the stereotype. Neanderthals as club-wielding brutes. But modern science paints a very different picture. They buried their dead with flowers. They made jewelry. Their brains? Actually bigger than ours. If there had been a Stone Age TED Talk, a Neanderthal might have hosted it. Yet, despite their strengths, they disappeared. And one discovery in a cave in France gives us a chilling clue. A skeleton nicknamed Thorin was found, and his DNA showed something tragic. Extreme inbreeding. His community had been isolated for over 50,000 years, despite being just a short trek from other groups. Imagine your town being cut off from the rest of the world for 50,000 years. No new people, no outsiders, no fresh ideas. That's what happened to them. Social collapse through isolation. But that wasn't the only blow. When Homo sapiens ventured out of Africa, we unknowingly brought with us an invisible killer. Disease. Our immune systems had evolved to fight the brutal diseases of the tropics. Malaria, sleeping sickness, you name it. Neanderthals had no such defenses. Like when Europeans brought smallpox to the Americas, the diseases we carried devastated Neanderthal populations. It wasn't war that ended them. It was biology. Now let's shift our gaze to Asia. High in the icy mountains lived the Denisovans, a mysterious group known only from fragments of bones and teeth. But their DNA? It tells a superhero story. Some modern Tibetans can live at 15,000 feet without altitude sickness. That's thanks to Denisovan genes. These people weren't just surviving harsh environments. They were thriving. Crossing vast oceans, reaching faraway islands. Their DNA still lingers in places like Melanesia and Southeast Asia. But they too began fading around 30,000 years ago, just as Homo sapiens moved in. Some Denisovans may have interbred with us, joining our communities in a last act of survival. One girl's fossil found in a Siberian cave proves it. Her mother was a Neanderthal, her father a Denisovan. In that tiny bone was the story of desperate alliances between collapsing populations. Meanwhile, on the island of Flores in Indonesia, a tiny group of humans, the Homo floresiensis, just three feet tall, were doing the unthinkable. With brains no bigger than a grapefruit, they hunted pygmy elephants, crafted tools, and survived in an ecosystem full of dragons. Literal Komodo dragons. They lived for nearly a million years in one of the world's most hostile environments. But they, too, vanished roughly 50,000 years ago, right when we arrived. Coincidence? Maybe. But oral traditions on the island speak of Ibu Gogo, small, hairy people who lived in caves. These stories sound eerily similar to the hobbit fossils. Could they have lived long enough to meet us? Here's the twist. These humans didn't all vanish in battle or disaster. Many were absorbed into us. DNA testing shows nearly everyone alive today carries traces of these ancient cousins. Europeans and Asians carry Neanderthal DNA. Pacific Islanders have Denisovan genes. Even Africans, long thought to be pure Homo sapiens, have traces of unknown archaic humans. These aren't just relics. They help us survive today. Neanderthal genes help fight off viruses. Denisovan DNA helps people thrive at high altitudes. Other ancient genes offer resistance to malaria. We're not the sole survivors. We're the legacy. 
Our genes are libraries of ancient survival strategies. So why did we outlast them all? Not strength, not brains, but something deeper. Connection. When ice sheets crushed ecosystems, we moved. When disease hit one community, others shared remedies. We built vast networks, sharing knowledge, food, mates. We adapted not just as individuals, but as a collective. Our cousins didn't have that. Neanderthals splintered into isolated groups. Denisovans were scattered across harsh terrains. Hobbits survived predators, but not the competition of modern humans. Around 28,000 years ago, the final Neanderthal fires died out. By 30,000 years ago, Denisovans and hobbits had left only footprints in caves and bones in the dirt. Here's the part that hits hardest. The threats that doomed them still exist today. Climate change. Isolation. Pandemic-level disease. Sound familiar? In a world where technology can connect us instantly, many of us feel more alone than ever. Political divides. Digital echo chambers. Social fragmentation. Are we becoming like those isolated Neanderthal bands? Cut off, unable to adapt? Or will we remember what saved us last time? It wasn't muscle. It wasn't tools. It was our willingness to connect, to reach across divides, to form communities. That was our superpower. And today, it still is. You, reading this, are the product of a million years of survival. You carry ancient instincts, ancient strength, and ancient wisdom in your DNA. Every time you push past your limits, that's your Denisovan side speaking. Every time you fiercely protect your family in a crisis, that's your inner Neanderthal. Every time you solve a problem with creativity and grit, you're channeling the hobbits. You're not just a human. You're a living time capsule of every human that came before. So here's the question. What will you do with that inheritance?